Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel and today I'm here for another collection overview video and today I'm going to show you my modern Parker Dufold pens. For this video I am basing my thoughts and uh, my facts on the information that is available on the wonderful site which is parkerpens.net and in this great Parker Duofold book. So, let's go back to our pens and talk about them. So, I will show you my overview of my collection or the overview of my collection of modern Parker Duofold pens and I have to say that I am lucky to have 12 of those really amazing pens. For me, they are. So let's start by just de defining what they are. So the modern Parker Dufault pens, I'm talking about the pens that were inspired in the vintage model from the 1920s, but they were re-released in 1987 and they were called Parker Centennial and they were called Parker Centennial because although they were they were released one year before but in 1988 Parker would go 100 years old so these pens were released uh, in the year before and they're called Centennial because of the 100th anniversary of Parker. And let me show you the first pen I have. And the, the first Parker Dufold that I have here in my collection to show you is this one. So this is a Parker Centennial Dufold. And let me just show you. You can see there are similarities between both. They are not the same. And one of, I think, the major difference besides materials and small stuff is and design even, is that this one is a button filler. You have to remove this blind cap to use the button filler. And the newer ones are cartridge converter pens. Then, besides that, they have several differences in their designs. Both have big nibs, just let me show you. This one also has a hero nib. A little different from what should be expected from a Parker Dufault, but that's another another history, but it's very hard to focus this, but I think you can see the arrow nib on both. So, let me take the vintage away. I've showed you the similarities, and this is the first one. This is the first one, but it is not the first Parker Dufault that I got. I will show you in a moment the first Parker Dufault, at least the modern one I got ever. But this is the first in chronological order that I have in my collection. So, this Parker is um, an interesting one. This is the model, the same that was released in 1987, although this one is from 1989. But it is very similar. So, this one has the old style clip, the clip changed, it became, became um, thicker and longer, and then there were also some other design differences, but this was how they were released, and they had this very nice Parker nib with a, a two-tone nib with the arrow there and saying Parker 18 karat gold. So very beautiful nib in my opinion. To me this is a great pen design. So this one I bought it uh, as a set, the pen and a ballpoint and I found them on a store and just let me go through this because it was maybe one of the most amazing purchases I ever made. 
I saw this at the store. I watched it and I thought one day, okay, I would like to have one of those. This is not my kind of favorite design. I like the newer design a little better, but I, I saw this one and I thought I should buy it. It was a very old uh, stationery store uh, that had some very old couple there and I didn't ask for the price but the next time I went there in that street I decided to ask them how much was this called and then the, the, the old lady uh, she said my husband is not here I will check with him the price and then I will call you and let you know so next day or something I received a phone call from her saying that the pen would be 55 euros if I was going to buy the set, the ballpoint and the fountain pen. If I just wanted the fountain pen, it would be 35 euros. So, of course, I said yes. What I understood is that they didn't really pay the, the price for this pen. Uh, so it was not kind of being ripping off that old couple is that they have this old stationery store and they bought the, the remaining leftovers of other stores that were closing. So they bought all the, the stuff very cheaply and they had this pen there and they sold it to me and I'm very happy owner of this pen. So this is from 1989 and it was made in UK. The next pen is this, which is beautiful. Uh, it is blue. Maybe it looks a little bit uh, purplish with this lighting and uh, the image on the phone. But this is the uh, Parker Centennial Fold Marbled Blue. The date code on the pen, and the date code is somewhere here on the other side of the cap. I think you can see it. But let me grab the black one because it's easier. I think you can see there. It says Parker made in UK and then it has the date code. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if you can read it perfectly but it's there. This one it's there also but because of the pattern it's harder to see and this is the same kind of pen. Different color of the material, the same nib and this is a very beautiful material in my opinion. It has some depth and I like it. And this pen is also from 1989 and from UK. Parker Dufolds were made in UK only and then they started being made in France also. The next one that I have in chronological order is a pen from 19... Uh, let me check... 1996. But before, let me tell you about some things that changed. This is the next one. This is the Parker International Dufold Lapis Lazuli. I have a video showing you how to differentiate between the Centennial Dufold and the, the International, but what it means really is that the Centennial is a larger model and the International is smaller, it is shorter, it is thinner, and the nib is also a little smaller. And you can see that on that video that I made. About the... it's a pen tip video. So, you can see this nib is a little smaller. But this pen from 1996, it, it is a pen that has some changes on the design. So. In the, the, the design of Parker uh, changed and from this pen to this the design had some some differences and these differences were made really in 1996 so it's fun that 1996 pen 1996 change of design and what happened is was this first the flat top with that Thing there uh, disappeared and 
it became this um, tapered uh, top of the pen, also black, but in a tapered way. Then it has the logo there on top, and it says do fold. This is the new type of clip, which is longer. In this pen you don't really see, the, see it that much because they are of the same size, but this pen is smaller, so if you... Maybe I'll jump forward a little bit and get a senior do fold. This is how the clip changed. The clip is much longer on the... not senior do fold, on centennial do fold, sorry. It's quite longer. So, that was one change, the kind of clip. The the cap rings, uh, they are no longer a wider band and a thin ring. They are two thinner rings and these are flat to the surface of the cap and these are a little raised. So when you touch these, you feel like kind of a li two little bumps there. Then the overall shape of the pen is the same, but it has a much shorter, let me get again the centennial sized. They get again this smaller black part and part and it has two, the older two ring design went for one ring, this one is higher, you can feel it, this one you almost can't feel it because it is flush to the section. Also, the date code changed from the back of the cap, there, where I cannot see it on, on this design, to here, on the base of the, on the top of this black part at the end. When you unscrew the pen, let me just show, it, show you these also, you have also some differences. One is that the two rings on the end of the section they became only one ring and here the nib changed the design. It was a simple arrow nib, similar to the nibs you would find on the Parker Vacumatic, and they went for this kind of nib that was used in some advertisement, uh, older advertisement from Parker, which was the arrow of Parker and then with a banner saying do fold across the wavy banner across the, the arrow. So this was the difference. This is called Lapis Blue. This, this color came to replace this one and you can clearly see they are different uh, materials, different designs. The next I have I guess this video will get a little longer again. Uh, the next pen I have is another Parker International in black. And this one has a date code of the year 2000, also made in the UK. So, this one is the same thing as this one. The same logo on the top, the same clip, same rings everything but it is a two-tone two nib like this one is and one has chrome trim the other one has gold trim and you can see let me put them this way and you can see the differences is that one has the gold nib with the, the, the silver arrow and the other one has a silver colored nib with the golden arrow. So they are in reverse in that detail. So this is, these are interesting pens. This pen was my first Parker Bluefold ever that I got from eBay. Then the next one is this. And this is a beautiful pen that came a step after those. So, this is from the year 2000, but then again, in the year 2000, Parker changed the, their identity, they changed their logo, and to me, they entered in a phase of a, a couple of years where they made 
really, really exciting models, in my opinion. I think they were really exciting. So, at this point, they had the regular Parker logo. I'm not sure if it is visible here. This logo, which is the arrow going across two P's back to back. And when they made this pen, and this one has the new logo, I'm going to show it here on the book. This logo, this, this pen it, it was really a, a very interesting one. This, this was a special edition they made. It was called the Mosaic, and the Mosaic pen was inspired in the Roman mosaic they made, which are beautiful. And they made these pens in three colors. It was available in blue, black and red. So, black and kind of white or pearlish. Look at the color. Blue and pearl and also red and pearl. The red and black were available in the centennial size and international size. The blue one was, was the first one to be released, was available only in international size. But it was also available as a rollerball. And this one is not a fountain pen by itself. It was a rollerball and then I adapted it to a fountain pen. So this was a little bit of a cheat. But I found this on, I touch the camera again, on a used stuff store here in Lisbon. Very, very inexpensively, mostly because it was a, a rollerball. And then I bought a, a section to put here, a black section, which is the same section as this. So I got a spare section that would be the same. And... I kept looking at eBay and at one time I found uh, just a cap and a nib being sold uh, separately from a pen that had some kind of disaster and I bought only that cap and nib because I, they, were, they were not selling the nib alone and so I got the correct nib. So the difference is this is the regular nib for the gold-plated trim. This is the regular nib for the, the chrome or platinum-plated nib. And this is the special edition nib, which, which is usually a medium nib. And it has... it is all of one color. So it is interesting. It's nice that I got this one. And this little cheat of turning the... Ball the roller ball into a fountain pen was was a cheat, but it was the way I could get this amazing pen from 2001, when this collection was released. Then, the, after this, in 2005, they went for a new logo. Not the new logo of Parker, but, but a new logo for Dufold. At this time, Dufold had not a real logo. Then they had that logo that is on top, which is the banner and also available, also visible on the nib. And so in 2005, they went for a new logo for Dufold. And the logo let me check if I not if I'm correct here in my in the order of stuff. They went for this logo, which is a ace of spades, and it is on the top of the pen, the default logo, and it is also on the nib, which says default just below the ace of spades, and so. This was a change that happened in 2005 and then they introduced a new range of pens, the Parker Check Dufold. It was introduced in 2006. This new series with the check pattern 
was really really impressive it was very interesting and very different from all that has been made before this was very plain these had some that kind of swirling acrylic this is more like those also some swirls or cracked ice acrylic then they went for these when they had to have different pieces of different materials and they had to bond them together and to make a rod and then to turn the pen out of it and then they, they decided to, to go a step further and they made these very small uh, not very small but smaller squares with colors applied to it and this one has kind of a silverish white uh, dark brown uh, dark sorry dark green and almost a black square there and this makes a pattern that shows us the pen is green but not flashing in your eyes so this is called the olive check this is part of that check collection that had five had four colors and let me remember if it let me try to remember them all I don't write them down it was the olive the citrine the amber and the marine check so olive green citrine yellow amber kind of brown and marine was blue I got two I was lucky enough so this is a nice one this is the olive check I love this pen I will I bought it from a seller on eBay that sold lots of very interesting pens at a slightly smaller price but I could have I could afford this one so I did it and I could afford another one that I'll show you in a moment this one doesn't have a uh, any date code which is kind of strange but the pen is real it's not a fake so I don't know what happened but it doesn't have uh, a stamp there maybe that is why that seller could sell it at a lower price maybe it was a faulty item from stores and from the, the factory and they could sell it at a lower price because of that I don't mind I think this is a beautiful pen so this was this color was not popular and was produced only in between 2006 and 2009 so very short time there was this one these are the two that I the two ones that I have this is also a Parker Centennial Dufold in the Citrine check. I love yellow pens and how nicer can a pen be than this? This is an amazing. This is a beautiful pen. It has gold trim. The other one has silver color trim. Let me uncap them. And you can see that difference I showed you before. One has the gold colored nib, the other one has silver colored nib, but both are two tone. This is beautiful pen. This was released. The date code on this one is from 2006. Both are from the UK. At this time, it was an exciting time, as I told you. Parker also released another pen size of which I don't have any and I would love to have so uh, I'm looking for one at a decent price I'm not looking for a special color I would like to be this one but um, I would love to have th these were released in th three sizes it was the Centennial the International and they made a demi size the demi size has the same nib as the International the same section the same cap but a shorter barrel so it is a smaller pen and it will take only the short Parker cartridges not the longer long Parker cartridges and will not take the converter so this is how we are in 2006 then they made some uh, no, they didn't make anything. They, they, they made some redesigning, but it was later. This is the another one. This is the same pen as that, that I showed you before, my first one. 
but this one is from 2014. The date code says that and there was some changes here. This no longer has the new logo, this has the newer the new newer logo which is kind of the older one but much flatter and you can see it has the ace of space instead of that and it has the ace of spades on the nib instead of the arrow so this pen is not you can uh, exchange parts if you want it really works but I got this pen only because it was inexpensive enough and I thought if I have the chance to get it I'll get it although it is the same maybe it is a way of having a spare pen that I don't really need to have but maybe it can be used as an exchange for something else that I may want more so it's still here waiting for one of those days then uh, in 2015 they released a new version a new collection and this collection was inspired in vintage colors and they made it in three colors they made it in the big red which is a color similar to this one from the vintage it was the lapis lazuli, which was a color similar to this one, but with no uh, swirls, with no pattern on the on the acrylic, and also the ivory. And I have the ivory, which was a white. It's not really white. It's more kind of ivory white color. This is. Uh, I wanted to show you something that is white. The book is white, and I think you can see it is not as white it is just a little ivory this pen is interesting because it it makes a difference from all the others all these pens have black ends of the barrel black tops of the cap and black sections these made that difference in those three colors they have only one color so the section the top of the cap and the bottom of the barrel are all made with the same material and same color which was an interesting thing do I love white? no I could get these quite inexpensive yes and when I can get a Parker Centennial Default inexpensively I get one because I love the model and some people sometimes say that I get the Moonman M600 or the Jean House Centennial, which are copies of the Dufold, and it's not fair. And I I buy them because they are inexpensive and I like the the shape. But I also buy Parker Dufolds, and you can see I have 12. So <laughs> you cannot say that I'm buying Jean How because I don't want to spend on a Dufold. No, I spent on several Dufolds. The next pen that I have to show you is another pen which is the same as that one, but it is the Centenni which it is the international version. It is the only pen that I have really the two sizes because these pens are completely the same, the same color, they have the same date code, which is 2014, and they have the, the same the same date code, the same color, same everything, just two different sizes. And I want to go back to the date in a moment. So you can see the only difference is the size of the barrel, the size of the cap and the width, and then the size of the section, not the length, but the girth, and then the size of the nib. This nib is a little smaller. It's not, it's not much smaller, but when you have the two pens in your hands you can find them different now I told you the date codes of these pens is 2014 for both but there is I told you before that they changed to this design in 2000 
15. Uh, this happens sometimes in Parker history, is that you can find an, officially, an official release date of one year and you can find date codes on pens from the previous year, which means that they started producing them the year before and they were just released the next year. So this is something that sometimes happens. This is why these are older than the official release date. It's just because maybe they were made before and they were released on the release date. So they put the real time stamp from the real production time instead of the release time of the pen in the pens. Then let's go to the last two pens. Um, they made some other design change and that design change was mostly on the cap band and it was made in 2017. Again, that happens. And so that's the biggest difference is what you can see here in this pen. This is the Parker Centennial Do Fold Big Red Vintage, that's how it's called. So it is an homage to the older pen. You can see the color is quite similar. It's not completely the same, but I think it's good enough. Even material is not exactly the same. The biggest difference, they have the same logo, same nib, same everything as the previous versions, but one of the biggest difference is that it has a large cap band instead of just a small uh, cap or two cap rings. And this cap band goes to the end of the cap. Actually, it extends beyond the length, the length of the plastic cap. This is a very nice pen. And in this version, they decided to do something interesting. The older ones had this engraving. There were some that had a more exciting engraving, like this one. But this is a modern engraving that says Dufold, Joe S. Parker, and then Fountain Pen. The other ones wouldn't say Fountain Pen because that was obvious. And the other ones had instead of Parker pen, they usually had dual-fold inside a banner. And that was the banner that gave the idea for the logo on these pens. You can see here. And they used the same kind of banner here. I think it was an interesting homage. So the difference was the cap band, which is very different. Again, the rest of the pen is the same and the date code went there into to the, to the threads in a different scheme. And this one was um, made in 2016. Again, this design change went into uh, the sales point in 2000. 17, but this was produced in 2016. I had to buy this one and this one was one that I bought at full price. Actually, it was my first purchase ever from Apple Boom. I didn't collaborate with them yet or anything. It was a very nice pen. I'm, I'm really happy for having this. These pens from these to the last one that I'm showing you in a moment, they are all made in France, not in UK anymore. And as far as I know, they don't have any pen production in France anymore. They moved their main production to France. The final pen is these. This is the Satin Black. That's how they call it. They don't call this Satin Black, but it is the same black. It is overall the same pen but with a different design here. The, the cap band is the same as that and this one doesn't have any engraving there. It has the same, it has the date code on the, on the section threads and it's it. It's also made in France and it was made in 2017. So this is also a very beautiful pen. These two are currently available in stores 
all the others you will find them used or new old stock but they are not as easy to find and I would love to have more but these pens are quite expensive and I can't buy them all so this was a very long overview I know but this is a model that I really 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 enjoy and I can't help to spend a lot of time talking about this if I had to choose a favorite model of pen for me it would be this one this is the kind of the perfect model I like the size I like how it writes I like the fact of it being a cartridge converter pen it is big it looks really nice I, I think this is this is the kind of the perfect design. I really, really enjoy this and that's why I get so carried away uh, with this video because this is really an amazing model, an amazing range. There are much, much more models and I'm very sad that I couldn't afford to get some of the models and colors when they were available. There was a model that I loved but I couldn't afford that at the time, which was the pinstripe uh, dual fold, which was very nice. I didn't want to spend more time with these, but maybe if you don't mind, maybe I'll just get the book and try to find the page I didn't prepare for this, but I really want to show you one of the nicest dual fold designs that I was not able to buy, which was this one the pinstripe it was available in the the color navy and the color chocolate and i think you can see this was i love the chocolate it was brown kind of a yellow thin line and a blue thin line it was a very beautiful pen but at the time i didn't have money to buy them and even today although i have some money to buy some pens i shouldn't waste so much money on pens. So, this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed this collection overview. Sorry for it being so long. I hope you had fun. If you like, please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep coming to my channel for more videos like this. So, I wish you a great time and I hope to meet you soon here. Bye!